right, chat. So I actually saw, I think it was Xander Hall reacting to this on his stream. I caught a little bit of it. I caught the tail end of it. And I wanted to share this with you guys as well because I thought it was an interesting uh, discussion. This is a clip that we're going to take a look at from uh, the show The Problem with John Stewart. This is an interview uh, they did with the Arkansas Attorney General Leslie uh, Rutledge. I think that's how you pronounce that. Um, and this is a discussion. Uh, I believe they're uh, discussing like uh, their laws in regards to gender affirming care for minors. And so I thought we would take a look at this chat, just kind of go over it. It's not the full show. If you want to watch the full show, I believe this is on uh, Apple TV Plus or whatever that streaming service is called. But uh, we're going to take a look at this. We're going to see this little sort of uh, clip from the show and kind of see what happens. So without further ado, ba, 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 ba. play that shit. Here we go. Why would the state of Arkansas step in to override parents, physicians, psychiatrists, endocrinologists who have developed guidelines? Why would you override those guidelines? I think that's like the craziest thing about this conversation, right? So for those of you guys who don't know my stance on this, I'm going to try to summarize my stance uh, as best as possible. Obviously, there's a lot more nuance to it, but I want to summarize this as best as I possibly can. So I am in favor of gender affirming care for minors. Okay. I'm very much in favor of it. Now I know a lot of people, uh, especially conservative people, when they hear that they automatically assume, Oh, you're okay with the term they like to use is the genital mutilation of children. No, that's not what I'm saying whatsoever. Uh, my stance when it comes to gender affirming care in regards to surgeries, like bottom surgery, for example, uh, I think that you should wait until the age of 18 to do that because those are like parts of gender affirming care that are not reversible. Those are very serious decisions to make. So I think that you should be an adult when you make that decision. Okay. Anytime you're dealing with like the surgery, you should probably wait until you're an adult. That's my stance on that. But when you're talking about things like, you know, puberty blocker for children who are going through puberty and they're experiencing gender dysphoria, I have no problem with kids using puberty blockers. And later on down the line, when they reach the age of uh, medical consent, which for a lot of places is the age of 16, I have no problem with them getting on HRT. Uh, you know, for the most part, uh, puberty blockers are reversible uh, and stuff like that. So I don't have an issue with those types of gender affirming care for minors. Okay. That's just kind of a summary of my stance just to kind of give you guys my thoughts on it. But, uh, that's the interesting thing about it is like the entire like medical community, right. Is in favor of this. Like if a kid comes to them and they're experiencing gender dysphoria under the supervision of their doctor and you know, their, 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 their parent or their guardian, um, these are considered the appropriate measures to take for somebody suffering from gender dysphoria, right? So when you see a lot of these like right wingers and conservatives getting up in arms about this stuff, like why are you speaking out against the expert opinions of doctors, right? Why, why are you speaking out against that? I mean, that's just, that's just, it, it's, it's really bizarre to me. I think it's important that all of those physicians, all of those experts for every single one of them, there's an expert that says, we don't need to allow children to be able to take those medications. That there are many instances right. where- But you know that's not true. You, you know it's not. I'd like to know what sources she's referring to that say that this is bad for, for children, right? I, I genuinely would like to know what her sources are. Yeah, exactly. Trans girl Jade in the chat says source. Uh, I don't think we're going to get a source from them, unfortunately. I, I genuinely don't think we're going to get a source from them. For everyone, there's one. There's these are the established. Well, I don't know that, that that's not true. I don't know that. Then why you would you that. why would you pass a law then if you don't if you don't know that that's true? Wouldn't you? Well, have I done know so? that there are doctors and that we had. That's just, yeah, exactly. If you don't know that that's a fact, then like why would you why would you pass this legislation preventing people from getting access to the care that doctors think is appropriate for them to get? Plenty of people come and testify before our legislature mm -hmm. who said that, uh, you know, we have 98% of the young people who have gender dysphoria, right. uh, that they are able to 
move past that and once they have the, the help that they need, no longer suffer from gender dysphoria. 98% wow. without uh, that medical treatment. That's, that, an, that's an, so, an incredibly made up. I would literally like to know what the source is for that. Nice argument. Why don't you back it up with a source? My source is that I made it the fuck up. What, so what, what is she advocating for? Is she advocating for like conversion therapy? Like what exactly is she advocating for? She doesn't, she makes these like vague statements where you don't actually know what she's talking about. A figure. And to be fair, I don't think she knows what she's talking about either. That's, that doesn't comport with any of the studies or documentation that exists from these medical organizations. What, what medical association are you talking about of these doctors? Well, we have all of that in our uh, legislative history, and we'll be glad to provide that to you. Uh, I don't have the name of that off the top of my head. I know it's something that you don't have the name of the organization that that off you're the getting top of my head. Oh, okay. But yes, we have all of that cited in all of our briefs. You're suggesting that protecting children means overriding the recommendations of the American Medical Association, the American Association of Pediatrics. The endocrine society we don't have enough data. it's interesting right it's interesting how john sword stewart is able to cite his sources to back up his statements right but she has she's got a complete inability to back up her statements at all like just she can't even name one person one study one organization nothing nothing at all chat it's very very odd but we don't have enough to show that these drugs are effective and that these children are better off and that we should you don't encourage have enough these or it's not enough for you. Let, let me let me try Good to question. Put it a different way and see if maybe this this can help. In Arkansas, if you have pediatric cancer, and obviously we all want to protect children, I think we established that earlier. Whose guidelines do you follow for pediatric cancer? Well, I think if my child, who is four, if I was faced with a terrible uh, decision, then I would be speaking to my doctor. And if my doctor recommended something that I disagreed with, then I would get a second opinion. And that's what mm -hmm. I believe that these parents need to make sure that they're encouraged to get numerous opinions when they're talking. But the thing is, like, if you're making laws preventing them from even getting those opinions in the first place, so, okay, so let's say, let's say a parent goes to a doctor with, like, a kid who suffers from gender dysphoria, okay? And the doctor's saying, this is what we should do to address this. Uh, you know, typically what they do is they start like the kid on some kind of therapy to confirm a diagnosis of gender dysphoria that usually takes about like six months or so. After that, then they'll start them on like the puberty blockers if that's something that they want to pursue. And then later on down the line, they progress to like HRT, et cetera, et cetera, right? So if you're talking to a doctor who's suggesting, hey, we think that these types of gender affirming care are appropriate for your child. And the parent decides, you know what? I want to get a second opinion just to be sure. So they go to another doctor and the other doctor suggests the same thing. Okay. Then they can make that choice for what they feel is right for their kid based on that second opinion. But the thing is, if you live in this state of Arkansas where they've like outlawed this kind of stuff, you don't even have the option to get a second opinion. So why is she talking about getting second opinions when you guys have completely eliminated the option to even do that? Ma make it make sense, right? Right, chat? Like, am I wrong here? Like, they've completely eliminated the option for a second opinion. So why is she even suggesting that? It, it just doesn't make sense. Talking about an irreversible step. You're not letting them. The state's not saying exactly, exactly. They're not giving them the option to get a second opinion. Get another opinion. What they're saying is you can't. What you're actually saying no, is the opposite. No, that's actually not at all what the state said. The state simply said that you cannot perform these procedures. And so exactly. So if you're telling people you cannot perform these procedures in our state, why are you suggesting that parents get a second opinion? You have eliminated the option for parents to even consider a second opinion to even consider a second opinion. Why even say that when it's, it's not an option in your state. Parents should get another opinion that they and children should want to have another opinion. But that's not... Because, again, these are 9, 10, 11, 12 So if 12 your adults. child is suffering from pediatric cancer and the state comes in and says to you, they recommend chemotherapy, but we're not going to let you do that. You can't. We think you should get a different opinion 
And here's the organization we think you should get the opinion from. They're not the mainstream, but they're an organization. So that's how you, that's who you have to be treated by. Does that sound like something you would well, accept? Well, I think that's a very extreme example. That's not at all in line with what we're talking about. We're not saying that at some point. How is that? What do you, what do you mean? Again, like. Moments ago, you suggested that parents should get a second opinion. But again, your state has decided that these parents can't get a second opinion. You've taken the option completely off the table to get an opinion that would back that. It's not it's not possible within your state. What what are you talking about? Because when you have cancer, it literally is, uh, particularly pediatric cancer, and having friends that have lost children sure. to pediatric cancer, having a four-year-old, I'm sure... I've got some bad news for you. Parents with children who have gender dysphoria have lost children. It's true. Because, chat, what, what happens to a child who has gender dysphoria, chat, and they're not able to get the treatment that they need or the support system that they need to deal with that gender dysphoria. What happens? Gender dysphoria contributes to a lot of intense feelings of distress, depression, anxiety, and unfortunately, in a lot of cases, it also leads to thoughts of suicide and could potentially lead to actual attempts at suicide. This is why it's so important to provide these options for gender affirming care to these kids. And again, I know a lot of like right wingers and conservatives, when they hear that, they instantly jump to, you want to do surgeries on children. I have at this point spoken to many, many advocates for trans kids, okay? And of all the advocates for trans kids I've spoken to, none of them have advocated for surgeries on kids. It's always. You know, if they, if they want to do social transition, meaning things like changing their name, changing their pronouns, uh, changing, you know, the way they dress and present themselves, stuff like that, that's totally fine. Uh, if they're reaching the age of puberty and, uh, you know, they want to delay their puberty to give them enough time to decide if this is the right choice for them, uh, you know, then using puberty blockers, totally fine, right? So a lot of these people are in favor of that. And then again, later on, as time progresses, when they reach the age of, you know, medical consent, if at that point they decide they want to get on HRT and kind of take it to that level, then they can do that. And then of course, later on in life, if they decide they want to get the surgery, they can do that when they're an adult. Okay. Like these are the kind of things that make it easier for these kids to deal with their gender dysphoria. And when you have states like the state of Arkansas that aren't even allowing these options to be available, you are putting the lives of kids in danger. So when I hear these like conservatives talk about, we want to protect kids. How can you say that by denying them the care that the greater medical community, uh, the academic community and so many different organizations say is the appropriate care, the appropriate guidelines to take to care for these kids. How can you say that you are trying to protect kids when you're literally taking the suggested care options away from them. It it doesn't make sense. The suicide and, and depression. They absolutely because it's have. acute. And so these mainstream medical organizations have developed guidelines through peer-reviewed data and studies. And through those guidelines, they've improved mental health outcomes. Yep. So I'm yep. confused why you follow AMA guidelines and AAAP guidelines for all other health issues in Arkansas, because we checked, but not for this. Because it's not actually about protecting kids. It's, it's never been about protecting kids. It's about eliminating the existence of trans people. It's about discrimination against trans people. You are literally using the protect the kids argument as conservatives will do with a lot of arguments. You're using the let's protect the kids argument so that you can justify your discrimination against trans people. That that's all this is about because maybe today it's just the kids eliminating that care for the kids. 
But tomorrow, it'll be eliminating that care for everyone. And we've already seen this happen in some places where they start with the kids. We just want to protect the kids. You know, trans people, we love trans people. And, you know, we want trans people to be able to live their lives happy and healthy just the way they want. We just don't want to do it to the kids. So they'll start with the kids, but then they progress further to now nobody can get this care. No one. It's literally just... It, it, it's a smokescreen for what they're really trying to say, which is we don't like trans people. We don't want trans people to exist. So we're going to use this argument of protect the kids to eliminate this care altogether. That's, that's what it is, Chad. That's what it's always been. It's simply saying, let those young people who are facing gender confusion and dysphoria, allow them to become adults and to make that decision. Allow a child to be a child. So here's where we have our, our crossroads. You've made the determination that protecting these children means not giving them access to the guidelines and care that have been designed by medical and mental health professionals for children expressing gender dysphoria. And I'm asking you again, what are your qualifications to step in and say, no, exactly. keeping you from that care is protecting you. You've made that determination. Well, these are irreversible decisions that these children at these young ages are making or that their They're parents not are making. I mean, if you're talking about surgery, yeah, surgery is irreversible. You're right. But again, I've talked to so many advocates for trans kids and... I haven't found a single one that is advocating for bottom surgery on, on kids. That's just, that's just not happening. Okay. Like, and you, and you, you hear these like dipshit chuds talk about it all the time. How like, yes, that's the, they are doing that. They're doing no, no, they're not that they're, they're not doing that at all. Okay. Like I said, it's, it, it's all like, Hey, social transition. That's acceptable. You know, it, 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 there's nothing irreversible about social transition for kids, right? And so that's fine. And then puberty blockers, those are reversible, right? Now, are there risks when it comes to taking them? Sure, but there's risks with any medical procedure. Any medical procedure you will do has risks. I mean, even like prescriptions that you take right? There's prescriptions you take every single day. Like you see the ads on TV. If you live in the United States, the ads for a lot of these medications, they all have potential side effects and risks that you take when you take them. I'm looking at like prescriptions. I take, I take Omeprazole because I have GERD. I take Omeprazole. One of the risks for taking this is I could potentially get cancer from taking it. Um, but it's one of those things that you weigh the option. Like, is it worth the risk to use this as a treatment option for me? Uh, you know, and, and you kind of have to weigh those options. Like, yeah, you know what? It's worth the risk for me. GERD sucks. I don't like living with GERD. I'll take the risk. Or like, I have like my, my medication that I take for my anxiety disorder. There's risks associated associated with the medication I take for my anxiety disorder. And I weigh those options and I decide, yeah, it's worth the risk for me. I'm going to take the meds, right? So any medical procedure you do, whether it's taking medication or, you know, some other kind of medical procedure, it all has risks, but we don't eliminate the ability to have these procedures or to take these medications just because there's risks. Obviously, if the risk is significant enough, then at that point you say, okay, yeah, sure. Like you, you're not going to do that because like we've seen a significant number of people have very negative effects for this. So we're going to take this option away, but that's not the case for something like puberty blockers. So it, it's, it's just so bizarre to me that the medical community agrees that these are acceptable treatments for gender dysphoria, but we're going to lock that out just because we think that's the right thing to do. It's, it's ridiculous. A decision. You're making it sound like a nine-year-old walks into a doctor's office and says, give me some testosterone. And the doctor goes, oh, thank God, because we're wanting to create an art. Do boots in the chat says, but tipster, have you considered that the government knows better than your doctor? You know, I didn't consider that. I didn't consider that. Shucks. You know, the government knows better than my doctor. I, I didn't consider that. 
That is that is a possible. You're right. You you got me there. Holy shit. Army of transgenders because we're crazy. And they go. Yeah, that's like the other thing. They talk about like, oh, we're indoctrinating kids into like turning trans. And it's like, this is just, this comes from the mind of people who are ignorant to the subject that don't know what they're talking about. You don't indoctrinate a kid to be trans. You don't indoctrinate any individuals to be trans. You can't teach someone or convince someone to be trans. They're either trans or they're not. So like this, this insane like logic that these people have that like we're trying to indoctrinate children to be trans it doesn't work that way it, it it genuinely doesn't work that way now we passed a law to protect the children in arkansas and i think that's what is important again the medical community disagrees with you that well, that's not protecting all of the children. medical community who doesn't who we do, have who? had experts testify you're in Arkansas. Okay. Again, no source. No source. Like I said, John Stewart was able to provide sources, chat. John Stewart was able to provide sources to back up his claims, but we've got nothing. Nothing from this woman. Nice argument. Why don't you back it up with a source? My source is that I made it the fuck up. From what medical organizations? Well, we have all of those in our briefs, and I apologize that I wasn't prepared to have a Supreme Court argument today in front of you, but I, we are <laughs> going to have arguments on this case uh, when the time comes. Gee, so that's it for the clip. If you want to see the full thing, you'll have to watch it on uh, Apple TV+. Plus. But uh, yeah, I just, we see so many of these arguments, and I've talked about this before, like, it's so frustrating that we have to talk about this shit so much, but this is like, this is one of the top things that like right wingers like to talk about right now. And they're trying to strip away the rights of trans people right now. It seems like it's between trans issues and trying to take contraceptive rights away from women. That's like the two big things that like right wingers are concerned about right now. But like, I wanted to take a look at this and just kind of give my thoughts because it's nuts. The majority of the medical community agrees that these are the right treatment options for children with gender dysphoria. And yet we still have these dipshits saying that they know better than doctors. Absolutely unbelievable.